This is video 19 in our series, Analytical Mechanics. Um, oh, before we get into the video here, we want to mention that the playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org. In this video, we're going to take uh, a few minutes and discuss some of the basic properties of the center of mass. There's some subtle properties that it has that have very important um, implications for what we're going to do in the future videos. So let's just take a few moments and discuss them. Um, here we have a system, an object, and it's comprised of a series of discrete masses. We only have two of them shown here in the figure, M1 and M2. And each of them um, has a position vector. R2 for mass M2, R1 for mass M1. And if we take the value of the mass times the length of its position vector, that's called a moment. And if we add all the moments up for all of these masses, and then ask ourselves, all right, if we did that, then if we considered the total mass of the object, at what point would that total mass be located so that when we multiply it by an appropriate position vector, it equals the sum of all these other moments. So here we have each individual particle and its associated position vector. We just have the length of this. We don't need to have that designated as with a bar above it. We just mean to take the magnitude of it times the mass. That's a moment. Add all those moments up. Then where would this theoretical point in the object be where all the mass was located? What would be the appropriate position vector for that? so that all the mass times the length of that position vector equals the sum of the moments of these individual particles that comprise the entire object. So that in a nutshell is the definition of the center of mass. Now, to understand some of its properties, let's just take a system where we have only two particles to consider. So suppose we have a like this. Here's particle M1. Here's particle M2. Somewhere in between is going to be a center of mass. And M1 is a distance x1 from this origin. So this would be its position vector. M2 is a distance x2. And the center of mass is a distance r. And the way this is set up, is the total mass of the system times the length of its position vector. Here the total mass is just m1 plus m2 times r. That has to equal m1 times the length of its position vector, x1, or this first moment, plus m2 times the length of its position vector, x2. Now, let's just take everything over to one side of the equation. So we have m1r minus m1x1 plus m2r minus m2x2 equals 0. And factor out m1 here, factor out m2 here, we have these equations. And to understand the significance of this simple equation, let's multiply both sides by negative 1. So we have minus, just keep the negative 1 on the outside, r minus x1 times m1. Then here we'll have minus, but now we're going to multiply through by minus 1 in here. So that's going to be plus x2 minus r times m2 equals 0. 
Now, let's look what we have here inside of the parentheses here and here. R minus x1. R minus x1, that's the distance of m1 from the center of mass. So let's call that x1 prime. Then we have x2 minus r. So here we have x2 minus r, that's the distance of m2 from the center of mass. We'll call that x2 prime. So what we have is minus m1 times x1 prime plus m2 times x2 prime equals 0. So what this is saying is here's the center of mass and when we talk about x1 prime and x2 prime times m1 and m2 respectively, what we're doing is we're taking moments about the center of mass. We're doing it so that anything to the left of the center of mass is negative, to the right is positive. But what we have then is that when you add up all the moments about the center of mass, it equals zero. That is another way then of defining the center of mass. So if we have an object and it's comprised of, or we're artificially dividing it up, say, into discrete particles, mi, here's the center of mass with its position vector. Here's particle mi with its position vector. But imagine for each of these particles mi, we're taking a position vector from the center of mass, ri prime. And we do it not just for this particular mass, but we have a bunch of them all over the place. And we add all those moments up about the center of mass. This comes out to equal 0. And in the future videos, we'll see this has great significance. And we'll examine that in more detail when we talk about uh, angular momentum. OK, that'll be it, I think, then, for this video. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about center of mass, internal forces, and how that relates to linear momentum. Then with that background, we can swing our attention uh, back to angular momentum.